shareholders at K2 Enterprises. We're so happy that you dropped by today. We hope that you're looking forward to this tip, which of course is going to focus on how you can format your Excel pivot tables for even greater effect. Uh, formatting pivot tables is something that can be a challenge because not all of the formatting options for pivot tables are as, shall we say, exposed as they are with a typical Excel report. So for this reason, what we find is that many users really do struggle with formatting their pivot tables. And because of that, oftentimes their pivot tables are just simply not as effective as they should be. What you're going to learn in this session are some really, really easy solutions to remedy that problem. Let's get started. As we get started, just a couple of quick fundamentals. Number one, pivot tables, I think we would all agree, are one of Excel's most powerful features, if not the most powerful feature. Put me in that second camp. I personally believe that pivot tables are indeed Excel's most powerful feature, and nothing really comes close. But all of the power that's in the pivot table is of no use to us if we're generating reports that other people really struggle to comprehend. They struggle to ascertain the true meaning of the data that's contained in those reports. Certainly with pivot tables, we can summarize potentially millions of rows of data very quickly, very easily without entering any formulas whatsoever. But again, it's in the area of formatting that so many people really do struggle because they try, generally, to apply, let's call it traditional Excel formatting techniques to their pivot tables, and well, that just doesn't work, as, as we all know. So that leads to the problem of how do we format our pivot tables for even greater effect. In this session, you're going to learn some really simple, some really easy techniques to make that happen. So let's dispense with PowerPoint. Let's jump directly into, to, excuse me, let's jump directly into Excel and let's get started. Now, as you can see, I've opened an Excel workbook. It's a very, very short data set here. There's no reason for us to get overwhelmed with hundreds of thousands of rows of data. This very short and simple data set will certainly suffice for our needs today. In fact, I have already gone ahead, just to save us a little time, I've already gone ahead and built the pivot table out of that data. And here we begin to see the problem. As I look at this pivot table, the pivot table itself is, is larger than the original data set. Uh, if we go back to the original data set, what do we have there? About 17 or so rows, but when I go to my pivot table, I've got a lot more than 17 rows. So the challenge here is, among other things, how do I format this pivot table? Not, I'm not talking about going in and formatting the numbers or changing the colors or the fonts, but how do I actually format the structure of the pivot table so that it's a much more compact, a much more readable report? Let's begin by clicking anywhere on the pivot table to make sure that we have access to our pivot table, uh, excuse me, to our pivot table analyze as well as our design tab. Now, one of the challenges that we oftentimes have with pivot tables is that by default, pivot tables revert to something called the compact format that started back with Excel 2007. And I would suggest that in many cases, the compact format is really, really good, but in many cases, it leads to some issues. For example, in this situation, if you're focusing on column B, uh, we can clearly see that the pivot table is in the compact format because we have multiple items that are, shall we say, nested under each other. Uh, more specifically, if we look at the rows quadrant down in the uh, lower right-hand corner of the window right now in the pivot table field list, you can see I have about a half dozen different items there. And the, the pivot table in this compact layout uh, layers those items one underneath each other, which helps, unfortunately, in this case, to lengthen the report. Now we can very easily overcome that if we will go to the pivot table design tab of the ribbon. And on the design tab of the ribbon, let's move all the way over to the left hand side. Let's choose report layout. And notice that we can choose between the compact format, which is the default, and outline form, which is similar to the compact format, but offers perhaps some marginal improvement in, in this case. Uh, what I'm going to opt for, however, and, and I think is oftentimes the right choice for, for many accounting and, and financial and other business professionals, is to use the tabular form. With the tabular form, now my data, e each of those items, I should say, each of those items in the rows quadrant of the field list now occupies its own column in the pivot table. So what's happened here is we've begun to reduce uh, some of the overall length of that particular report. Again, that's the tabular format, and it helps to reduce some of that nesting. 
Another major benefit associated with the tabular format is now each of our items have their own individual drop-down filter and sort buttons. <clears throat> when we're back in the compact format, uh, with everything sitting in one column, sorting and filtering can be challenging for the uninitiated, so this helps to make sorting and filtering even more clear than what it would otherwise be. Now, a very important consideration here is if you believe that the tabular format is really the best format for you on a going forward basis, um, you have to understand, again, that the compact format is the default starting with Excel 2007, but if you are running Excel 2019 or newer, including versions of Excel provided through an Office 365 or a Microsoft 365 subscription plan, you can actually change that default layout. And you would do so by clicking on the File tab of the ribbon in the upper uh, left-hand corner, and then going all the way down in the lower left-hand corner to Options, click on Options, click on Data Options, and notice here we can change the default layout of our pivot tables. And so I might click on that and say, you know, I really don't want to have to make this change every single time I build a pivot table. So instead of having the compact form as my default layout, I think what I'm going to do is set that to the tabular form, click OK, and now all future pivot tables that I build will indeed have the tabular format in effect as opposed to the compact format. Now another issue that can sometimes cause some problems with our pivot table formatting is the presence of subtotals. Let me say that a little bit differently. The presence of what I would uh, deem to be unnecessary subtotals. As you are aware, perhaps, pivot tables always want to summarize uh, the numerical data, including, uh, by default, uh, putting subtotals in place. Maybe the subtotals are useful in some cases, but maybe they are not useful in some cases. Let's understand that we certainly can go in and manage our subtotals. Now, to make that happen, again, let's click on the pivot table. Let's go to the design tab of the ribbon. I kind of get the hint uh, that the design tab of the ribbon is important as far as formatting is concerned. And let's go all the way over here to the left-hand side where we see subtotals. And now what I'm going to say is do not show subtotals. By selecting that option, all of a sudden, my report is starting to get cleaned up a little bit. We're not having all of the uh, somewhat extraneous data, useless data, uh, including, in this case, the useless subtotals that were out there. Um, and, and my report is starting to take more of, a, uh, more of an organized, for lack of a better term, more of an organized look. <clears throat> so again, I'm, I'm not saying that we would never want to have subtotals. What I am saying is oftentimes it is appropriate and in fact even necessary to disable the subtotals to, to get the report cleaned up and make it a little bit easier for the average user to consume. Now, another one of these techniques, these little known techniques for cleaning up the pivot table is to also from the design tab of the ribbon, go all the way over to the left hand side once again, and let's click on the drop down arrow underneath report layout. Okay. Now, when we do that, we have an option, a couple of options down here, as you can see, either repeat all of the item level, uh, all of the item labels, excuse me, or do not repeat all of the item labels. Let's see what happens when we turn that on. When we turn that on, now my report has been completely filled in, uh, leave, uh, removing all of those blank spaces out in the various item columns, those six item columns that we uh, had in effect. So there's no mystery, there's no confusion about who was working on each project, who the client contact was, phone number, so on and so forth. Now, if you don't like that look, again, you can go back to report layout and say, do not repeat the item labels. Uh, some would argue that this is a little bit cleaner presentation. Um, <clears throat> I, it, depending upon the circumstances, I think is the best way of saying it. Sometimes I find myself using this little bit cleaner look, but oftentimes I find myself preferring uh, this more direct approach where we've got entries in all of those cells. So the report itself doesn't give the appearance of being incomplete. Unfortunately, sometimes when uh, some people see the report in this format, they, they uh, make the uh, assumption, incorrect assumption, of course, that there's missing data there because there are blanks in the report. So we can certainly overcome that just by saying, again, repeat all the item labels. And then the last issue to focus on here is let's make sure that we understand what the collapse field option will do for us. If we go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab of the ribbon, so let's just click there for a moment to, to expose all of these options back out 
uh, for us. We, we do indeed have the opportunity to go in and say that we want to collapse the fields, which will make this report much more, shall we say, compact than what it presently is. To make that happen, what I first need to do is click in what I would term to be the field of interest. So in this case, my field of interest is in, over here in column B. It's the uh, client field. I'm just going to click anywhere in that field. And upon doing so, now what I get available to me is uh, in this active field grouping on the Pivot Table Analyze tab of the ribbon, I have the opportunity, as you can now see, to collapse that field. And when I collapse that field, now I have a very, very compact report that summarizes all of our activity, in this case by client. But then notice that for each of the clients, we can begin to drill in. So I can drill in on Lucasfilms, or I can drill in on Disney, or I can drill in on whichever client that I want to drill in on. And now, for example, maybe I want to go in and, and you know see all of the things that we have going on with, with uh, Marvel Studios. I can see who the client contact is, the phone numbers, project managers, so on and so forth. And certainly, if any of these interior items were grouped, I would be able to expand out the groupings there as well, just by clicking on the minus sign or the plus sign, as the case might be. What's important here to understand is if we go to the ribbon and take advantage of expand the field or collapse field, that is going to apply to all of the entries in that particular field. But if we click on the plus signs and the minus signs directly on the face of the pivot table as I'm doing now, then that will apply only to that single item. Clearly, pivot tables are Excel's most powerful feature. I think most of us could agree on that. Uh, but sometimes some of the formatting options that are available uh, with respect to our pivot tables can be a little bit challenging to find, a little bit challenging uh, to, to know exactly what they're doing. I hope that what we've been able to do in this session is show you some very useful tricks, four specific tricks, for example, uh, to clean up your pivot tables and make them even more uh, useful, not only to yourself, but to the people to whom you provide those. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you spending some time with us, and uh, we hope that you'll come back and check us out again in the very near future. We continually update our YouTube channel with more videos, so stop by again real soon. Once again, thank you.